What's up guys? We're back at it again. Welcome back to the channel. This one's gonna be fun. This one's on that car. Alright, so as you know, I own this Mark IV Jetta VR6. It's a 03 six-speed VR6. Today we're doing the first mods on it. Um, I tinted the windows when I first got it. Um, didn't do much after that. I replaced this mirror that was missing. If you haven't seen that, check out my intro video on it. Um, today, we're doing the fun stuff. First of all, the car is already in jack stands. Um, those ugly wheels that I had when I bought it, those are gone and sold. Uh, the new wheels have been on here, but they're over there. Can't see them yet. You guys will see them at the end of the install. But, get our attention to here. Ta-da! Look at this, guys. So we are going to refresh the front suspension, the front control arm, um, with new end links. I believe that's what they're called. They go right there. This one's, this one on mine is actually broken. Um, so yeah, we replace both of those on each side. These, this style, two new ones. Um, I decided to go with some urethane, prothane, urethane bushings for the lower control arm and some new lower ball joints with new hardware as well very recommended and the best part coilovers um yes these are no name coilovers um you guys gotta understand i got this car super cheap which is something we'll talk about when the build is all done um so i did not feel like spending three four five six thousand dollars on coilover so i went with these um i got these for really cheap but again i will go over the prices and cost of everything when the build is done and if i can get a year out of these i'll be more than happy um, there's no there's no dampening adjustment or anything like that, but they do have helper springs here Which as far as I know I've been around the coilover game for a while These do help our ride a little better and the, you know you have obviously height adjustability come came with the wrenches So we're doing all that I also got my fender roller here Pretty sure I'm gonna need them for the new wheels as you guys will see when we throw them on so now I mean just gotta Start taking stuff apart. I'm gonna start with the front end just because there's a lot more work up front than there is in the back Alright, so I've already been welcomed to the Volkswagen world. Um, so to get this control arm out over here, you have to get this bolt out. Okay? To get this bolt out, you gotta pick up the engine a little, the oil pan. To do that, what I did, I don't know if this is how you do it or not, but loosen this, get out of the way, loosen this right there, and this mount has a bolt right there. Loosen that, untighten it. I don't know, maybe an inch or something. And then there's another one on this side. Right, right there, that one. So untighten the same thing, well, both sides about an inch. And then you come under here. And there's this bolt. So the control arms, you see right here, there's this bolt. This is the subframe bolt. One up here. And this one back here. So if you're looking at under here so this one so loosen these same thing about an inch then you can lift up the engine so those up top loosen so the engine can go up these ones loosen the subframe so we can go down so you can get this bolt out of here which is like one of these right there so obviously we hit the engine the oil pan so anyways but like on all Volkswagens sorry one second like on all Volkswagens the bolt goes through here so it goes in there and inside the subframe is one of these nuts and they're welded on the inside well this one split without any sorry without any force split and became loose so it's a common issue on these stupid Volkswagens because I don't even know I don't even see any tack welds on that I don't know how that was even on there anyways so to get this out obviously because the bolt is now moving you can't you have to cut a freaking slit in the subframe bend it down hold this I held this with a these lock pliers I managed to where'd it go I managed to get it you know holding it like that and then use the 18 mil to undo it pop it out so what I'll do is I'll put a regular nut I think or I'll get this one um, sand it down to the bare metal have my buddy come here and weld it at least halfway you know like half circle whatever he can get from under here or I'll put a regular nut on there tighten it 
and then go to an exhaust shop when I get exhaust work done and have them tack that nut from here as well and then I'll beat this back in and I'll have them weld it all around so all safe and sound but yeah how stupid so to get that you have to go through all that up yeah, that's what I had to do to get this out so loosen this bolt here right there the one in the back over there drops the subframe about an inch don't take them all up loosen the ones at the top that I already showed you guys that lets the motor go up and then you put a piece of wood your jack I lift it up don't go crazy lift it up just enough so it can slide that bolt up so now that I got that out um, yeah this is the broken link right here that I was talking about now I got to do this one which is on the back of the control arm back here so it's also 18 mil here and then you need a ratchet up here or a wrench and a ratchet hold it hold it up here and then untighten here so I'm gonna do that get this out and then there's the ball joint over here loosen that up this will pop down so after I do that I'll uh, get back to you guys all right it's out so this is the let me turn this light So that's the bolt, the one that goes, you have to pick up the engine. The one back here is one of these. So it's the bolt that's what I was talking about. A regular nut on the top, goes like that. And then the ball joint, which this one is shot. You shouldn't be able to move them that easy. So, control arm is out. That's the back of it. Front of it, over there. And the ball joint is over here, you guys. All right, so now, gotta remove these bushings, or those two, and that's where the urethane bushings go. And then, these, these will go like this. This goes through here. I can't do this with my hand, but these go in here, and that goes in there. And then these big ones, these ones get squeezed through here. That's gonna be fun. I'm being sarcastic. That goes through there. And then that's gonna get pushed in there. So these replace these rubber ones. And the reason I'm upgrading to these is because this actually stiffens up the suspension a little bit and doesn't make it so wobbly when you're turning and stuff. Ew. I would use gloves, but it's impossible to work with gloves. I don't have the same feel. And then the ball joints right here. So, bam, new one with new hardware which is these right here and on the bottom it's all it is simple i mean the hardest part was the whole situation with having to cut the subframe out over there now it's that's pretty annoying gotta be honest that's a stupid design but it is what it is so yeah after we've after i finish rebuilding that control arm then we're going to move on to the shock and the the coil over because i want to get this over with first because this Taking these out and putting these in is going to take a while. So I'll get this figured out and then uh, we'll kind of walk you guys through it. Sorry, there's not a lot of time lapse in this. Um, it's not easy to inspire myself and I'm kind of learning as I'm going. And uh, got to figure out how to get these out. I do have a press, as you guys can see. So hopefully I can use that to get them out. All right, get back to you guys. So fast forward two days or a day and a half. Um, that evening I couldn't do anything because couldn't get the bushings out. Um, my press didn't have like the right connections and tools and whatever you call them. Um, so I went to O'Reilly's Auto Parts Store. Went to O'Reilly's down the street the next day after work and rented their um, wheel bearing removal tool or bulb joint, whatever. The one that's supposed to remove these bushings. And um, the rings that they had, because it's supposed to be a certain size. Let me show you guys. Like uh, for this here you know stays in here so it has to be this size so they had a ring that was bigger and one that was smaller they didn't have anything that was this size to get this out so i had to go return that by the time i got all that done the um the harbor freight was closing which i looked online i was gonna go to harbor freight and buy one of these little tools here um what is this called it's called a body saw from harbor freight it's like 30 bucks so what i had to do is i ripped the bushing out screwdriver and a knife you kind of just move it around and you cut it and anyway so i get that out then you take this body saw and you cut from the inside out just until you get past this and then you rip it the rest of the way you put a chisel in there and you just hammer it out don't ruin the edges obviously so then i cleaned it up a little bit i got the new bushings in 
Um, for this one, I did use the press to push it in there. Um, make sure you lube them up really well. I used this. Um, after I took the bushings out, I used a drill and uh, some of these cleaning wheels. Well, I don't know what you call them. Cleaned that edge on the inside here and here to clean them up. Um, then I wiped them down. I lubed them up with that, the multi-purpose grease. And then you pretty much just pop this in. This one, taking out the old one, I was I was actually able to get it with a hammer and just I kept tapping it, tapping it until it came out. This one was a pain in the butt one because of this metal ring. But anyway, so they're both out. New bushings are in. Like I said, lube them up. I lubed up the that metal on the inside here. I lubed up the bushing itself. And then when I put this, the center metal part, I looped that up as well. And then they go right in. It's in there pretty tight. Got the new ball joint in. It's all the new hardware. I like the, so the new hardware came with nuts on the, for the other side, for this side. But I actually use the same one because I like how it has like a triangle sort of situation here, like a bracket almost. So I use the same one. But I put the new ball joint and the new screws on the top. Tighten those down. So this control arm, technically it's done it's ready to go and go in so i'm gonna do that now put it all back in there um yeah put it all back in there put that together put this link on pretty much i was gonna start removing the coil over while i was out here but I can't because i'm gonna show you carefully if you try to mess with this the shock to come down and all that there's a high chance that you're gonna pop this uh axle out from the transmission and that's a mess i did not want to deal with um, because this obviously moves around and you move back and forth and, and if you move it if you're pressing this down to get that shock out You're gonna pop that sucker out. So I'm gonna leave that alone I'm gonna put the control arm back so that way the control arm is holding onto this where the ball joint is underneath And that way what it's just gonna let the top come down, you know when I get the shock out But it's not gonna let the bottom come out to get that axle out. So keep that in mind if you're doing this yourself All right, so I'm gonna get this control arm all back in and I'll get to you guys after that. Then we're going to start removing the shock and get the coil over in there. All right, so I already got the control arm all back in there. As you guys can see, it's all bolted in and everything. And I already got the shock out, but there's a shock. There's a coil over. To get it out, you start up. Well, you can start up here if you want, but there's a little dust cap. It's usually on top of this. Take that off. Then you undo. Then this sits up here. You'll see that with the nut on it undo that that's what sits up here right there that's where so you take that off because we're going to reuse this stuff for the for the coilover um, then down here you just remove all your brake lines um, and then you the big bolt that goes in here in the housing sorry right here take that out and then this was hard obviously because it stays in there for how many years and as you can see i tapped it with a hammer to make it come down and it did, I got the shock out. Um, so now, to be able to put that coil over on, we gotta remove all this stuff. So I remove these top hats and the little bearing that's under it. So first we need a spring compressor because you gotta compress these springs. If you if you unbolt that sucker, it'll, it'll yeet that way. So let's put a spring compressor on here and then we'll take all this apart, move it over to here, set the height, well, you know, whatever I, think it's going to be the height the 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 rate of everything and uh we'll go from there okay so after the shock is pushed up in there um you tighten this you can use it you can use an impact gun uh you pretty much tighten it till it doesn't move anymore um don't forget if you did it the way i did it don't forget tighten that engine mount over here uh this with with this bolt thing right there uh this reservoir and then you can throw your dust cap back on top Mine's like broken, but it still works. So that actually pushes onto the bolt and it holds it. And then also don't forget down here, tighten the, the main shock bolt. Let me get a better light in here. So don't forget tighten that right there. Um, your end link, I got my new one on. Put all your brake lines back into the shock and that's pretty much it. The side's all done. So obviously I lowered the motor back, I tightened the subframe bolts up there, you know, back there and everywhere. And uh, yeah, just go over your bolts again. If you want the torque specs and stuff to this stuff, it's all online. Uh, but most of the shock nuts are 45 foot pounds. 
and then uh, yeah just look online google that stuff there's plenty of diys on youtube that's why i didn't really just show all this because i mean it's already there you know i'm not gonna waste your guys' time so since this side took so long to do on video i'm gonna do the rest of all four or all three the rest of the three of them off video so since the front is done um i felt like at least let me just bust out the rears off camera because it just the front took so long i didn't want to film this anymore but anyways so the backs were really easy you just take these two bolts off at the top and then the one down here right here and that'll let it drop a little bit then i use a spring compressor to compress the oem spring took that out put this here put the let me see the adjuster collar right there that bolts down from under here as you can see got that on there got the new shock you have to move over the the boot and this whole thing uh, whatever it's called cover the boot you have to move all that over to the new shock you do that you tighten it at the top but it back tighten the bolts i had to use i used the jack down here to kind of press it back up and man that's it and i set the rear locking nut um height wise same on both sides and yes i did do this side as well bam so the backs and that front passenger corner are done i can't believe how back how fast the rears went that's crazy it literally took maybe half an hour <sighs> so all i have left is to do that one corner over there boom and just like that like two days later the car is done the new wheels are on and uh I'm going to give you guys some cool shots, and then we'll we'll talk about it after the cool shots. So, I hope you enjoy these. Um, yeah, let's just get to it. that i'm um, sorry there wasn't a lot of time lapse in this video but i just wanted to get this done it's been a long time waiting i've had the coilovers and the bushings and the ball joints i want to say it was before last winter so like october november so i've had them for a while so it was really just time to get it done you know what i mean and um yeah it was it was a kind of a pain in the butt project that you guys saw as i talked through it it was a lot of extra things happened that they happen but i wasn't expecting to happen to me obviously like you know nobody does but they happen and they made everything go a, a lot take a lot longer than it actually did so yeah i got that done and the wheels are 19 inch i know that's kind of wide they're 19s i forgot the width of them but my tires all of them uh it's a square setup and the tire size is 235 35 19 all around the way you see the wheels sitting right now, I have no spacers or anything like that. I think I'm going to throw maybe a 10 mil on the back just to flush it out a little more. Um, the front is fine. I'm okay with that. I don't want to really want to rub. I actually don't rub. I don't rub on anything. Um, I was rubbing on a little corner on the front, but that's because the fender was damaged there. I had like a little indent in the edge of the fender, so I push, push that back out. But no rubbing other than that. This car rides really nice. Um, it's actually really comfortable. I've already been driving it for about two days. I've put about 70 miles on it. Um, I've driven on the highway, on the back roads, on bumpy roads, over speed bumps and all that. Like I said, no rubbing, no weird bumping, no no weird sounds or anything. Um, it rides nice. You know, I don't know how long it's going to last, but like I said in the beginning of this video, if I can get a year out of these, I'll be happy because that's a good price. Because the, the shocks, the OEM shocks and springs in here are just too soft. It's too bubbly. It's not my style of driving. I actually wish these were a little stiffer, but because the way they are it's actually really comfortable and it's, it's, i would take this car on road trips um so you know hope you guys enjoyed this video next is going to be a lot of exterior mods um it does need some mechanical work but i won't be doing that stuff on videos um i'll kind of mention it to you guys after i get them done like on whatever i do next 
but and then the interior this interior is this thing is stuck i can't even move this i don't it's broken in here there's like a pin or something and it's broken i can't get it out kind of sucks i might have to cut those out i don't know i don't know i'll have to google some info or if any of you guys know please let me know how i can get this off i have a new one that's just like it i just got to figure out how to get this off because it's it's stuck in there it's not coming out the exterior color the black is growing on me although i hate black it's just hard to keep clean and stuff like that and it really gets annoying to me um the whole car is getting painted 100 percent, not getting dipped or wrapped or anything like that it's getting painted who's gonna paint it i don't know yet it might be a mako paint job i'm sorry but this car is not worth that much but it's gonna get painted fully painted um i'm not sure if i'm keeping it black or i'll change the color i'm not sure there's a lot of cool colors out there that i like uh, even though my favorite color is red, I already have enough red cars, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, other than that, so there's nothing else really right now. Yeah, you know, subscribe, like, share. If you if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you have any opinions or comments or whatever, how to get that off. Or if you have any questions, comments are down below. Check them out. I mean, not check them out, but let me know what they are, what those questions are. And uh, yeah, I'll throw some more shots here at the end. And uh, I hope you guys like what you see. See you guys in the next one.